Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Knowledge Unlimited. In this video, I am going to explain about 2-bit down counter. If you have not seen my previous video, please look at that because you will get clear idea how to design each and every type of synchronous counter. In the previous video, I have explained about 2-bit up counter. Now in this video, as a continuation of that, I am going to explain a 2-bit down counter. So the thing is same here as it is 2 bit so there are two dif uh, four different combinations that are possible so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so for all these four different combinations we require two flip flops so we will take two flip flops here so now the counter is as it is a down counter let me take it is starting from the highest state that is 3 then it should come to 2 then it should come to 1 and then after that it should come to 0 after that again it should come to 3 so in this way, uh, we are going to derive the sequence so that we can uh, write the input and output of uh, flip flops that are to be used in the design. Now let me take Q1 and Q0 as the two outputs of the flip flop because we want two flip flops. Now let me use D flip flops for this also. In the designing of a modulus of a counter, I am going to use other type of flip-flops. For time being, I am using just T flip-flop because it will give you clear understanding and it will be also easy for me to complete uh, the explanation. So now the inputs of the flip-flops, uh, before writing the inputs of the flip-flops, if this is considered as the present state of the sequence, that is or the count, count sequence, then the next state will be Q1 plus and Q0 plus. So you know that the easiest feasibility is as uh, D1, D0, the next state is equal to the inputs of the D flip flop. So we are going to leave like that only. Now let us start with 3, then the next state should be, it should go to 2, so 1, 0. Now if the present state is 2, then it should go to 1. If the present state is 1, then it should go to 0. And if the present state is 0, again it should go to 1. So these are the possible cases that can be altered so if it is in 3 then it should go to 2 and if it is in 2 it should go to 1 and if it is 1 it should go to 0 now you can write the same thing here because in the d flip flop the next state and the inputs of d flip flops won't vary so 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 now what you have to do is you have to write the input uh, these equations that is the e k map equations of d1 and d0 in terms of q1 and q0 in the previous video, I already told you why we should not use Q1 plus and Q0 plus to write the input equations. Because if you use these inputs, which are called as future inputs, then the system will become non-causal, which means you can't realize it. Because the system which depends on future inputs is called as non-causal system and you can't design such type of system. Now, if you observe this, without writing the K-maps, I can simply say that if you look at D1, it is like xnor operation of the inputs you can see it is like an xnor operation of inputs if one xor with one the output is one zero xor with zero the output is one and remaining all cases it is zero now simply i can write d1 as q1 xnor with q0 so this is one of my input equation now if you observe at this second thing then it's like if q0 is 1 then it is 0 if q0 is 0 then it is 1 if q0 is 1 then it is 0 if q0 is 0 then it is 1 you can see that it is complementing it is the complement version of q0 you can see 0 1 0 1 which you can see here so i can write d0 simply as q0 bar so with these two equations i can design without requirement of any so let me write them again d1 equal to q0 x0 with q1 sorry q q1 x0 with q0 it doesn't matter and d0 is q0 bar so without wasting time let me draw the counter design let me take two flip flops as it is asynchronous let me give clock to both of them this is my clock and my input d1 d0 so the output is q1 q1 bar q0 and q0 bar now you connect according to these equations that is d1 equal to q1 x0 with q0 so q1 and q0 you derive the two inputs 
from those outputs and you connect an XNOR gate and give as input to D1. So this is these are this is where how I am taking the inputs to the XOR XNOR gate from these flip flop outputs and that output of the XOR XNOR gate sorry XNOR gate xnor gate i am giving to input as flip flop 1 flip flop 0 you can say so or flip flop 1 flip flop 2 it doesn't matter it is i i am giving uh, it as d1 you can look here and d0 is simply q0 bar so if i connect this if i connect this then it will be d0 so in the, in this way i can design a 2 bit down counter easily now i am not going to explain up down counter because uh, why to waste time in the similar type of concepts but i am going to give you an idea up down counter so you try on your own and if you are feeling difficult with the design of two bit up down counter then you comment me in the comment section i will again make a video on that so the idea is if you recall the previous video for 2 bit up counter for 2 bit up counter the circuit is same but for q1 uh, i mean for sorry not q1 for d1 i am giving q1 xor q0 as my input for d1 but whereas in 2 bit down counter in, in now in the present video you have seen that for d1 i am giving q1 xnord with q0 as the input now the only thing that is changed is only these two cases these are the two cases that are only changed one is xor and other is xnor this is xnor and this is xor so what i am i am telling you is you instead of doing all those you just like this you just keep a switch a switch or you can replace this with a multiplexer a 2 by 1 mux with a select input s and one input is xor gate which means the inputs for the xor gate will be again q1 q0 you can do all that and other input is xnor gate now you you put in such a way that this is i0 and this is i1 so if s equal to 0 then xor gate operation so it will do up count it is d1 i mean flip flop 1 and it is flip flop not that is d0 and this is all the outputs and inputs these connections you can make now if s equal to 1 then it will perform or act like a down counter so with a single switch circuit or a multiplexer you can make uh, the you can utilize uh, all the two designs that we done so far that is individually up counter and down counter and you mix them into a single circuit and you can design an up down counter or if you are not interested to do so the original procedure is this is a, a logic I am just saying if you are not interested in these type of logics what you have to do is just you draw a table where the states are same but depending on the select input or up down you can take this as up down input if it is 0 you assign this to a particular task like up count so the next state will be 0 1 if it is uh, un, uh, four states will be possible so the present state is 0 1 then the next state will be 1 0 if it is 1 0 then it is 1 1 again it is 1 1 then it is 0 0 so this sequence is for up count and now if the up down select is 1 then again you will get four cases that is it can be start from 1 1 then it should go to 1 0 if it is 1 0 then it should go to 0 1 if it is 0 1 then it should go to 0 0 again from 0 0 it should go to 1 1 now this sequence is for down count now you give other here d1 and d0 as the inputs and you design the equations this is next state i all, almost explained you now so all you have to do is you have to build an input equation for this so you got eight combinations here so three inputs that is for a k map s q1 q0 so by using those you build somehow you build using k map i'm not uh, okay let me write that s q1 q0 so you draw the k map for this so it will be 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 so now you fill these and you derive the equations for d1 and d0 
and you draw the circuit and you can connect so instead of doing all those uh, one of the efficient way one of the efficient way to do is by using this procedure that is by taking a switch circuit this is one of the most efficient way and easiest way to design an up down counter so hope you guys learn something new today and uh, i will explain uh, about uh, modulus of a counter and to design a mod 6 counter i hope or mod 10 counter any of these two i will pick and i will explain in the next video so that with that we can complete a counter design synchronous counter design and later we are going to move to counter analysis which is which plays a crucial role in competitive exams and while explaining about this modulus counter only i am going to explain about clock diagrams also because the time is lapsing that's all for this video and see you in the next one